Just want to make sure that you can hear me. I guess I should go to the chat part. Great, thanks for letting me know, Yaya. Sometimes we talk and we're not sure whether we're being heard. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know that you hear me. Get started in one more minute. Welcome back, Yanko. How's it going? Welcome, Shen. Good to see you. Hope everything's going well. Yep, your uncle just got your text. Well, just actually just saw it. There is a class tonight. Baruch Hashem, you found us. You can make it. Baruch Hashem. Okay, let's get started. Let's start out tonight by thanking Akadosh Baruch Hu for giving us the opportunity to learn. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us the opportunity to learn and to learn while we're living in this world so that we can not only learn the theoretical, but apply it practically in our lives, which is the whole purpose of our learning, to learn something of value so that we can use it in our life, enhance our life, to make our life more connected to Hashem. So tonight, we're going to be learning a very, very deep and interesting and exciting halacha. As I mentioned in the chat text posting, whatever it's called, uh, we're learning Hilchos Yes Hapas, which are the halachos regarding cutting bread, literally breaking bread. And not surprisingly, I chose this halacha because it's based on Tinyana Bays that we've been focusing on. And also not surprisingly, the lesson is going to show us how these halachas are very, very relevant to our topic. And we're gonna understand how they're relevant and we're even gonna understand what our topic is. What is our topic? So the halacha starts out with a quote of the halacha from Shulchan Aruch, which I would like to read here. It says, Hapas koveya bracha la'atzmo. Bread has established for it a bracha for, of its own. Machmas chashivuso, due to its great importance, stature. Vehem chamisha mine dogon, and that's regarding the five types of grain. Mavur b'shulchan aruch as is explained in the Shulchan Aruch. So <clears throat> we've been learning in Tinyana Bays the whole idea of connecting with something which is very outside this world, this realm, also known as Olam Haba. What, what exists outside this realm is not Olam Haza. It's not this world. It's not this worldly. It's Olam Haba. It's the next world, Li. And the way to connect to that world, and understandably, that's a world that has a greater fundamental appreciation for Hashem, because they're not trying, just to use a, a physical metaphor here, we're not trying to see the stars. They're not trying to see the stars through the cloud cover. I remember once a little while ago, my family and I took a trip out to Colorado and my wife was so ecstatic one morning because she had been up the night before and seen millions and millions of stars. And the reason why she was able to see all those stars was because we were up so high and there was less interference from the clouds, from the, from the pollution, from the light pollution, call it pollution if you want, anything that, anything, anything that inhibits a deeper 
fuller, more spectacular appreciation for something can be considered pollution. In uh, Kabbalistic or uh, Ibn Ahmed terms, we could refer to that pollution as tuma, impurity, anything which anything which has the ability to drag us down, traipsing us, dragging us through the mud, obscuring our vision, confusing our true purpose in life, making our goals seem like abstract concepts compared to the mundane daily tasks of getting up, brushing our teeth, going to work, and repeating all, everything all over again the next day. The real purpose of life becomes totally, totally obscured. And so it's with a clarity of vision that we seek in order to connect to Hashem, in order to like, like Lahavdil, but as a good metaphor to, you, to use to be able to see those stars as clearly as we possibly can. Rabbi Nachman says the way to accomplish that is through hoda, gratitude. Now, a lot of people would say, how could it be that simple? If it were that simple, wouldn't more people be doing it? Wouldn't all the schools be teaching it? Well, I have the same question because I, I know a lot of circumstances where a lot of people are not necessarily using hoda and they haven't found their Shem either. So I think it's a good, a good benchmark, a good method to use. And I've used it in my own life. So I'm speaking from personal experience, tried and true, that the way to gain clarity of Hashem, to connect to Olam Haba, to break out of the constraints of the cloud cover that encases us in our lives in this world, is through hoda, through gratitude. With an increase in gratitude comes a shlemus hadibor, a perfection in speech. And that's known, as we've said before, as lashon hakodesh, the holy tongue. So it could, it could be a reference to Hebrew, and it as well can be a reference to proper speech, helpful speech encouraging speech, Torah speech, tefillah speech, refraining from negative speech, Lashon Hara. It's also a reference to Shabbistic speech, making sure that the speech that we employ on Shabbos is of a higher level than the topics and the style of speech that we use during the week. So with more hoda, more gratitude, a person merits having an elevation in their ability to speak. And as a result of that, a person now is truly set free because now he can take an olam haba experience and transport it into his daily life, into his world. He can't get to Olam Haba because that's only reserved for those who have passed on. But we all experience some of Olam Haba while we're alive. It's called Shabbos. Shabbos is Mayen Olam Haba. And to the, extent, to the extent that a person connects to Shabbos and observes Shabbos properly, to that extent, the person does have an Olam Haba experience. Well, says Rabbi Nachman, that Olam Haba experience is not relegated only for Shabbos. It also can help out the weekday. So the weekday is the polar opposite of Shabbos. On Shabbos, we feel like children of Hashem. And during the weekday, it's easy to feel like an Evid, like a servant. We've gone into this, so I'm not going to to expound on it any more than that, but leave that for right now. Then the Rebbe introduces a very, very interesting concept, which has had a, a major prof and profound impact 
on me personally since I've learned it, and especially since I've been learning learning it online and in my in-person Chabura here in Elizabeth. The idea of the Achtus HaPashut vis-a-vis the Pu'ulos Mishtanos. So the Achtus HaPashut is the simple oneness of Hashem. Hashem is one. There is no disunity when it comes to Hashem. There's no Monday or Tuesday. There's no warm and cold. There's no good and bad. Any opposites that you would find, any disparity that you'll find looking around your world, you're not going to find that. That's not part and parcel of Hashem. Hashem is one. Kulo Tov. Only good. Only one. And yet, we live in a world of period, disparity, disunity, conflict. Not everything is bad. Some things are good, but therein lies disparity as well. The mixture of good and bad is at polar opposites to Hashem. Hashem is not a mixture of good and bad. Hashem is only good. So to the extent that we understand that we have experiences in that in life that are good or bad, to that extent, we're relegating ourselves to a very this world type of existence. And yet, if a person tries to connect to Hashem, he'll have to disavow himself of the notion of Pu'ulos Mishtanos. Of diff- I'm not, I don't want to keep on having to pause to translate, but a Pu'ula is an action. And Mishtanos means distinct, disparate, different. So now that we know what that phrase means, to the extent that a person views his life as being comprised of pu'ulos mishtanos, to that extent, he's actually relegating himself to a different form of existence that's further away from Hashem, a different form of existence than Hashem, to to an extent, to whatever extent, because Hashem is one. So if he's only seeing pu'ulos mishtanos and pirud, disunity, different experiences coming at him at different points or, or, or ways in his life, to that extent, the person is not going to be seeing the Achtas HaPashat of Hashem. So it's curious to wonder why are we in a place of pu'ulos mishtanos? Why? That's part of Rabbi Nachman's lesson, and it's very much a part of the Hilchas Betzias Hapas, which we're going to discuss right now. <clears throat> we know that before we eat anything, we have to make a bracha. Anytime a person derives pleasure from this world, for the most part, whether taking a drink, eating a snack, even smelling something enjoyable, person should make a bracha. They're obligated to make a bracha. So, Rav Nassim, in this halacha, teaches that this concept of making a bracha before we enjoy something of this world is very, very much in sync with Rav Nassim's lesson. Because in Rabbi Nachman's lesson, he teaches about the finding, the Achtus HaPashut, finding Hashem, specifically amongst and in an environment of Pu'ulos Mishtanos. When we make a bracha on something of, the, of this world, this, I'm making a bracha on what I'm eating. There's no food in Olam Haba. I'm making a bracha on something I'm drinking. There's no drinks in Olam Haba, etc. When I make a bracha on something that I'm enjoying in this world and deriving benefit from, I'm identifying with the Pulos Mishtanos because I'm utilizing this world in a very, very significant way. And that, God forbid, has the power to detract from our ability to connect with the oneness of Hashem. 
On the other hand, it very much has the power to connect us as well, if used properly. So, Reb Nassim says, the reason why we make brachos on our food, on other things that we enjoy and derive benefit from, is just that, to elevate that experience away from an environment of pu'ulos mishtanos and connect it to the achtos hapashet. And in that way, even the most mundane of activities, like eating, animals eat as well, even plants, I engage in some form of taking nourishment from their environment. Wouldn't necessarily call it eating, in the traditional sense, but most things alive do that process. Humanity has the power of speech. By utilizing the power of speech, which is the quote unquote ticket into Olam Haba, because by guarding our speech on Shabbos, we experience Olam Haba. By guarding our speech during the week, we bring the Kedusha of Shabbos into our week, creating more Olam Haba awareness during the week. So speech is integral to identifying with Olam Haba. So when we make that bracha on a food, item or drink or anything else, we're utilizing speech to elevate the food and the experience of eating away from the pu'ulos mishtanos and bringing it into a status, a state of olam haba, meaning an ability to use that physical experience to experience and connect to Hashem. That's a very, very, very powerful understanding of why we make brachos and what the brachos and what eating are really supposed to be doing for us, transforming. The bracha that we make, says Reb Nelson, is a form of thanks. So when we make a bracha, we're not doing Hashem a favor by making a bracha. We're also not, one of my favorite expressions with regard to brachos is a bracha is not supposed to be a speed bump. That the goal is to eat, to consume something, and me enjoying that item is only separated by saying this text. And therefore, the quicker I can dispense with the text, the better, and let's enjoy. Right, brachas are not intended to be a speed bump to slow us down for two seconds. They may slow us down for a couple of seconds if we're saying the brachas with a little kavana, with a little uh, direction. But the main point of the bracha is because we say, Baruch Atar Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem. We are reaching out to Hashem with our dibor our most powerful tool, exclusive to humanity. And we are using it to say thank you and praise. Mahodos ulahalel, to thank and to praise Hashem. And when we say that bracha with an intent, not only understanding the words we're saying when we make that bracha, but with an intent to say thank you, Hashem sincerely for what I'm about to eat or even what I have just eaten when you make a bracha chrona. When a person does that, they are transforming that entire experience into something which has the, the capacity to bring them to a greater appreciation of Hashem in their life. Additionally, says Reb Nassim, brachos, if a person is able to say them in Hebrew, should be said in Hebrew. Obviously, if a person can't say a bracha in Hebrew, maybe their native language would be the next best thing. Maybe not in all situations, but with a little practice 
and an Hebrew English sitter, most people can learn in not a long time to say their, their brachos in Hebrew and to understand what they're saying. And that fits in with exactly what we've been saying, because brachos are hoda, are saying thank you to Hashem, connecting to the hoda, to the olam haba, to Hashem, to the achdus hapasha. And by saying them in Hebrew, that's an that's an expression of lashon kodesh the holy tongue. So when a person um, compares the weekday and Shabbos um, to what we've been discussing with regard to the Pulos Mishtanas and the Achter Sapashot, the Sheshe Semehacho, the six days of the week, are the Pulos Mishtanos. What you do on Sunday is different from what you're going to do on Tuesday, etc. And if you think about it, everything is different. You may feel like you're going through the same motions uh, in your life every single day, but in reality, you're doing different things all the time. You're able to do different things because it's not Shabbos. Um, and that represents the Pulos Mishtanos. There's also six days of the six days of the week that right away indicates that it's a pu'ula mishtana. It's a, it, it, it is, by definition, comprised of different parts. The six days of the week is an olam hapirud, an existence of disunity, separation, things being disjointed. And, as we said before, there's good and there's bad during the week. Shabbos, on the other hand, is Mayan Olam Haba, where it's only good. As a result of that, there's only one day of Shabbos, because it's only one. Hashem is one. Shabbos is one. And we can't do the other things on Shabbos that we do during the week. We must refrain from the, those, those different things. True, we have specific mitzvahs that are related to Shabbos. But to my knowledge, those mitzvahs, those actions, are there specifically to underscore and accentuate the oneness of Shabbos. Now, the Muslim says something very, very fascinating. <coughs> he says, Ikar is galus, Ali de Pulos Mishtanos Daika. What does that mean? He says that the main revelation, the main way to uncover the Achtus HaPashut, the oneness of Hashem, is through Pu'ulos Mishtanos, is in an environment of Pu'ulos Mishtanos specifically. What that means is humanity, because we live in the environment that we do, has an opportunity that even the angels don't have. The angels live in an environment where they see after Sapashit. They don't see Pulos Mishtanos. They can't understand us. We, on the other hand, struggle to understand Hashem and his reality. But when we do, we are able to reach heights that even the angels are not capable of reaching, specifically because of the fact that we are doing it from the environment within which we are found. So that's why Rav Nassim says, Ikar Heaskalus, the main revelation of this Achtus HaPashit comes specifically from a world of Pulos Mishtanos, which means that the more trouble you've got going on in your life, the more struggle in a certain sense that you seem to be experiencing, the greater the potential when you find that act of in your life 
boy, is that going to make a big, big splash, a really, really big impression on the universe. And that's exactly what Hashem created us to do. He put us, he, he understood what he was doing, into a world of Pulos Mishtanos and said, I want you to find me in that world. Now, why would he do that? And I'm going off topic just a little bit, but he would do that because the Bria, the creation overall, was left unfinished initially. And he left it to us to finish, to put the to put the, the stamp on the final, the final stages. And we do that by introducing into our world Hashem, by recognizing Hashem, by thanking Hashem, by seeking Hashem, by learning Torah, by davening, by doing mitzvahs. It's a wonderful, wonderful process. It's an incredible process that's uniquely human. The lesson points out that the word matar, which usually means rain, is a composite, and I believe this is in some of the Svarim HaKadoshim, but I don't remember offhand exactly which one. But the word matar, or matar, is spelled mem tes resh. He says that the mem stands for mare, the tes stands for tam, and the resh stands for reach. Mare means how something looks. Tam means how something tastes. And reach means how something smells. So using the phrase, the term rather, matar, and knowing, understanding that the biggest blessing that we can get from Hashem is that he puts matar into our world. He makes it rain so that things, obviously, so that things can grow and we have what to eat, and our animals can eat, etc. But even more than that, the bracha of matar represents that Hashem is giving us a bracha by putting us in a world diversity, in, a, in an environment where everything looks different, tastes different, smells different. I know we left out a couple of senses. I think it's only a remez. So I know people are counting on their finger while well, there are five senses, but we're not counting all five right at the moment. It's okay. But the point is that the, the, the word matar hints to the fact that Hashem knows very well that we're in an environment comprised of multiple things and distractions and challenges. Good things too, bad things, challenging things, all things, all kinds of things. It all happens right here in this little thing we call our world, our existence. And this ties, ties us into the concept of a bracha. <coughs> Excuse me. A bracha can be general or it can be specific. So technically speaking, if somebody wanted to learn one bracha and use it for everything, he ever ate or drank, he could do that. The bracha would be, Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Blessed are you, Hashem, King of the entire universe. Shahakol niya bidvaro, that all have come into being by your word. Shahakol niya bidvaro. Meaning that somebody wants to use that bracha as a catch bracha for everything he, he, he enjoys. He would be Yotze, but he would also be missing the, the boat. Why? So Rav Nassim explains, if the goal is, as, we said, we, as we've explained, to be specifically an environment of Pu'ulos Mishtanos, because it's there when we discover the Achtos HaPashat ha of Hashem, that we make the biggest impression on the universe, when we find Hashem in the Ulos Mishtanos, and we thank Hashem, even in an environment of Ulos Mishtanos, 
then to homogenize everything that we experience into only one bracha would not be very impressive. Rather, by making different brachas on things, we actually express that very notion that we live in an environment of pulos mishtanos, that we live in an environment that's challenging or that has a lot of different things going on. And yet, we still bring it home to you, Hashem. So, if I'm eating an apple, I make high eights. If I'm eating a piece of lettuce, I make ha'adama. If I'm eating a cookie, I say bere mine mizonos. If I'm drinking wine, I say bere puri hagafen. If I'm eating bread, I say hamotzi lachem min ha'aretz. All of these brachos, says Reb Nassim, underscore the concept that yes, we do come from a, an environment of pu'ulos mishtanos, and yes, we can use all of our life experiences to get closer to Hashem by understanding that each one of those things has the same source, leads to the same place, Hashem, Hashem's oneness, his achtas hapashat. Whereas if someone would content, would, uh, would content themselves with the brach of shahakol, then that would be the end of the story because it would be, oh, everything is only one, one environment and now you're discovering the oneness of Hashem. You know, that would, I would expect that to happen pretty much almost. It's not as, it's not as impressive. So if Nassim says that the importance of the concept of matar, mara, tam, reach, and making an individualistic bracha on each item underscores this whole concept of finding the achtus hapashut in the pu'ulos mishtano. To take it one step deeper, <coughs> excuse me, to take it one step deeper, everything in this world although sometimes it's rather challenging to figure this out, but everything in this world comes from the uh, Hashem's Das, the highest level. In the spheros, top sphere is Keser, crown, then comes Chachma and Bina. But if we don't count per se for our purposes, practically speaking, the sphere of Keser, then what we do is we, we start out with Chachma, Bina, and we add a quasi-sphere of Das. Now, Chachma is knowledge, wisdom. Bina is the, is the ability to apply that knowledge. And Das is the amalgam of the two, to understand when and how to apply what you know from the Chachma and the Bina. So in a certain sense, the epitome of all of Hashem's wisdom, so to speak, is Das. That reflects the highest, highest level that we have access to at least. And it also represents Olam Haba because in Olam Haba, there's no confusion about the existence of Hashem. Every, every being in Olam Haba has das of Hashem, has knowledge of Hashem. In, uh, in Asilava, the world, in the, in, the, in the time to come, meaning when Mashiach comes, the primary, primary thing that will be different in those days, as opposed to now, is that all of humanity will have clarity about the existence of Hashem. We won't have to wonder. We won't have to have the Muna. The time to have the Muna is now, to the extent that we can. We also get tremendous scar for having a Muna. But in Olam Haba, excuse me, in Asilova, when Mashiach comes, there'll be no Muna. 
there'll be das, there'll be knowledge of Hashem. Now, during our current reality, before Mashiach, not in Olam Haba, but rather in Olam Haza, every item in the world has a, a component of Hashem's das. Nothing would be alive. Nothing would be part of the created reality if it was totally void of Hashem's das. Hashem wills that something exists, and it exists in our world. That's his das. His das is the creation of reality as we know it. The more das, the more das an item has, the more chashuv it is, the more important it is. So in our context of brachos, the higher level brachos, which are amotzi lechem min ha'aretz and berei pri agafen, as Rav Nassim points out, it's because those items have the greatest concentration of Hashem's das. Is it any surprise that we make Kiddush on Shabbos with wine? And Shabbos is Me'an Olam Hamba. We want to employ the highest level food, make the highest level bracha to connect to Hashem. So we make Kiddush on wine. Uh, as well as the meals that we eat on Shabbos, the three meals, we make sure that we wash, that we have hamotzi, that we eat bread for the three meals of Shabbos. And I feel that it's for the same reason, that hamotzi lechem in aretz, the brach on bread represents the highest concentration of Hashem's das in this food item. And more das means more connection to Hashem. Because after all, in, uh, in Asilava, when Mashiach comes, that's going to be the environment. That's going to be the, uh, that's going to be tangible. The das, the understanding of Hashem. So when we, when we observe Shabbos, which is already Me'in Olam Hamma. And we watch our speech and we are thanking Hashem, especially with brachos, especially specific brachos, which represents that each one of those food items have its own unique chashivas, its own unique importance and value. It gives us more and more of an opportunity to connect to Hashem and to gain more das ourselves. So just to wrap up tonight's session, I just wanted to say that if there's any takeaway from tonight and perhaps the other sessions as well, although the message has, brings us on an unbelievable, totally inspirational and thrilling journey through many areas of the Shulchan Aruch to apply this concept. But the main takeaway that we're trying to, to derive from all of this experience, from all of this learning, all of this discussion, is that a person, in order to connect to Hashem, must be willing to take whatever his or her environment is in their life, and each one is different. That's what makes you unique compared to the other person. But that means there's a contribution that you can make to the Tikkun Olam that no other person can make, and that we're counting on you to make that contribution as well. Discuss it with friends, discuss it with families, with family, how you're involved in this process of transforming the pu'ulos mishtanos of our reality into seeing the achtos aposhet of Hashem. And with that, we really all will be zocher to an enhanced level of das 
of understanding what Hashem is, not, not completely because we're still human, but much, much more greatly than we do already. Understanding Hashem, and more importantly, connecting with Hashem, walking with Hashem, with regard to whatever experience He's chosen to give us. And that sometimes the experience He does give us, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes the experience He does give us is specifically because He's counting on us to use that what would seem as a very far-flung, you know, Pu'ulos Mishtanos experience. But he's counting on us to actually use that experience specifically to get closer to him. And that has immense, intense, deep meaning, not only to the a person themselves, but also to the overall Tikkun Olam and bringing, bringing Das, bringing realization of Hashem into this world. We'll stop here tonight. I want to thank you for joining me. And if anybody would like to um, look, look it up and learn it inside. I know I didn't do that tonight. But um, it's, again, it's Shulchan Aruch, Lekutei Allah, Shulchan Aruch Archaim, Hilchos Betzias HaPas, Halacha Bez. Thank you very much for joining me. If anybody has um, anything that they would like to either ask or say, or I, I could hang out for a couple of minutes, but um, really just wanted to, I wanted to bring it very personal tonight and very tangible and not just, not only read it inside, although I, I feel that no words coming out of this mouth can compare to the holy words from Rav but, um, but I, but I, I sometimes feel that we may get, lose the forest, the trees, or whatever that expression is. Oh. All right. Good Shabbos, everybody. Take your Shabbos. Connect to the Achtos HaPashat of Hashem. Use your Dibur to be Mamshich, the Kedusha, and the Brach of Shabbos into your weekday. May your whole life, from this step forward, only be imbued and inspired by an enhanced realization of Hashem in your world. Thank you very much. Have a good, good day, good night, and a good Shabbos.